Thank you very much for uh, having me. Um, and thanks to uh, the Ezra Center for Persian Gulf Studies for holding this uh, conference and uh, inviting me. Um, I would like to um, raise a question about Iran-Israel relationship, um, which I think is very important. Um, all of us know that uh, Iranian government has a deep um, hatred and um, animosity toward Israel. We can say that the anti-Israeli um, position of uh, Islamic Republic uh, shows uh, or shapes uh, its foreign policy more than any other principle. It is so essential to Iran's uh, foreign policy that Iran can disregard any theological or ideological differences with any other anti-Israeli group or entity and make alliance with them. Uh, this is a very obvious fact for everyone. But let's assume uh, one day we have a democracy in Iran and Islamic Republic is gone. Can we expect a democratic Iran to have a normal relationship with Israel or not? In other words, uh, beside the governmental uh, hatred toward Israel or um, state anti-Semitism, uh, can we uh, speak of uh, non-governmental elements that uh, somehow generate or uh, enhance uh, anti-Semitism and anti-Israeli attitude or not? Um, we know that some people are trying to be uh, politically correct uh, by denying a reality which is uh, historical anti-Semitism in uh, Iran by, you know, quoting the book of uh, Esther and, you know, ancient stories in the, in the Bible, how nice Iranians were to um, Jewish people and so on. But uh, the reality is that we had a uh, traditional historical anti-Semitism in Iran um, until modern time. And this anti-Semitism was mostly a religious um, anti-Semitism, not racial. We see a change in the anti-Semitic um, attitudes in uh, 20th century, um, which is um, extensively uh, discussed by many um, political uh, philosophers and historians, which is different from the uh, traditional one. Um, this anti-Semitism um, is uh, influenced by uh, many factors, um, especially um, the political uh, developments in, in Europe and uh, also in uh, Soviet Union. Um, in 20th century, um, uh, in Iran, as in many other countries in the world, uh, the left ideology was the dominant paradigm for the intellectual uh, environment. The majority of intellectuals, secular intellectuals, were uh, leftist. Still in Iran, in today Iran, beside the Islamist, the most powerful uh, intellectual force belongs to uh, to the left. 
and left for many reasons has its uh, own version of anti-Israeli attitude and um, fighting against imperialism and all those leftist values um, automatically entail that uh, they have to uh, fight against uh, Israel too and they have to um, support uh, Israel's uh, enemies. This goes back before Iranian Revolution. Um, many Iranian um, leftists even um, went to Palestinian territories in um, PLO camps to get uh, military trainings. So they had a military, financial, and organic relationship with uh, Palestinians who have been in uh, fight with Israel. Actually, if you look at the pre-revolution era, the anti-Israeli um, position of the secular leftist is stronger than um, many clerics or even uh, Islamists. But in general, um, um, hating Israel or um, um, making it the, the enemy par excellence of the Muslim world or the oppressed people um, is uh, something that um, is common between Islamists and seculars. It makes them united with each other. Um, they cannot agree on any um, ideological uh, or theological principles more than anti-Israeli attitude. <clears throat> That's why even uh, today, after you know, uh, about 40 years passed from Iranian revolution and uh, all uh, violence and um, atrocity that we have seen from Islamic Republic, um, violation of human rights in different um, uh, fields, um, still there are uh, lots of uh, leftists in the world who are um, supporting Islamic Republic and uh, even in the time of President Ahmadinejad they were supporting Mr. Ahmadinejad um, exactly because of his uh, anti-Israeli opinions and um, um, attitudes. Um, so I think these were left, leftists who made Israel not, um, you know, only a country but a symbol. So Israel for them is something more than a state, more than a country, more than a geographical reality. It, it uh, symbolizes the ultimate uh, evil. In, in, in the today world. And you cannot um, fight for justice. You cannot fight for um, uh, good without fighting against Israel and without um, uh, being active against all those who support um, Israel, like United States. Okay, all this um, has generated uh, lots of problems uh, in Iran. Um, I give you an example. Um, we know that Iran, um, the Iranian government, is um, using a very thick 
uh, anti-American content in its uh, propaganda uh, system and its education system. But uh, this is not uh, that th this has not been that successful, which means um, despite the very harsh and aggressive anti-American propaganda of Islamic Republic, Iranian people, um, many of them, I, can, which I cannot give you a percentage or number, but a great deal of the society, they um, have a very friendly view about the United States. So uh, Iran's, it's fair to say that Iran's anti-American propaganda was not successful in the last four decades. But this is not true about its anti-Israeli um, uh, propaganda. And the reason why is that <clears throat> Um, the, the government needs uh, to make less effort to convince people that the, um, the battle between Israel and its enemy, it's the battle between evil and good, because uh, it goes beyond uh, Islamic ideology, it goes beyond the philosophy of the um, Islamic Republic, and you don't need to hear that from a, cl a cleric or a ruling jurist. You hear that from, you know, many writers, artists, and um, professors of the universities. What we have now in Iran is um, um, many layers of ignorance about Israel, um, despite the fact that uh, you know Iran and United States uh, they consider each other, um, they consider themselves each other's enemy. They don't have diplomatic relationship, but still Iranians know. Uh, a lot about the American culture. Uh, they travel a lot to United States. Um, they translate uh, American literature. They watch American movies. They read books on American history. But when it comes to Israel, actually the majority of Iranians uh, know almost nothing about Israel but the daily news about the conflict between Israelis and Palestinians. And in recent decade, um, Islamic Republic was successful in portraying Israel not as uh, an evil who wants to, you know, um, destroy um, the, the unity of Muslim world and uh, uh, to weaken Muslim community, but as specifically um, targets Iran and its goal is to um, destroy Iranian government or change Iranian regime or uh, wage a war on Iran. This um, image of uh, a warmonger who wants to uh, just um, uh, bomb, drop bomb on ordinary people uh, without any justification uh, has been to a large extent accepted by many people, especially in the course of the nuclear negotiation it was uh, extremely hard for ordinary people to understand why Israel has uh, the position um, it has with regard to the negotiation or the nuclear agreement and so on. So what happened was that the nuclear negotiation, for example, in the last two years, um, 
has united pro regime uh, strata of the society with the anti regime uh, part of the society. So this is one of the exceptional phenomenon that we have seen in recent years. So by using anti-Israeli um, um, element, the Iranian government succeeded to somehow destroy the opposition. Uh, so now, in the course of the negotiation, we had only two camp. Uh, one camp who was pro-peace, uh, pro-negotiation, anti-war, and supporter of Iran and its president, Hassan Rouhani. And on the other hand, we had the um, pro-war, war mongers camp, and on the top of the, them, um, Israel and its, its government. So um, by simplifying this, this um, scenario, um, the anti-Israeli attitude um, has um, been somehow, um, has become stronger in Iranian society and uh, has become um, even um, a, more, uh, a more difficult taboo to talk about. So what we have now is an ignorance uh, or a blockage of the sources of the knowledge about Israel not only by the government, but also by intellectuals, by academics, by artists, uh, writers, and not, also, not only inside Iran, but also outside Iran. So in Iran, uh, we don't know what's happening in Israeli uh, cinema. We don't know. Uh, great Israeli writers. Um, actually, we don't know much about the history of Israel, and even we have difficulty to understand the, the logic of um, the conflict between Israel and uh, Palestinian or um, Arabs and the logic of the rational of decision making um, in um, Israel's uh, foreign policy. The number of books um, available in, in Persian uh, about Israel, the history of Israel, um, Israeli culture, Israeli society, it's, um, I think it's almost zero. And um, this help, I mean, this censorship is not only the government censorship. It's a censorship applied by civil society too. I think here we come to the last point, which is the, the responsibility of Israelis to introduce uh, themselves to um, Iranian people, to break this censorship, to fight against this ignorance. Um, Irania, Iran and Israel, for many reasons, they could be um, potential um, allies in the region. They have lots of similarities. Um, both of them are surrounded by enemies. Both feel that they are placed in a hostile environment. Uh, they have difficulty to find uh, friends among their neighbors. Um, but uh, the, the historical experience shows that under Muhammad Reza Shah, 
there was a great relationship, a productive relationship between Iran and Israel, and uh, such relationship can, um, can be made, can be initiated again in another time. But in order for that kind of uh, political and diplomatic relationship or e economic relationship um, to be uh, formed, you need to pave the ground by breaking the cultural walls. Um, in reality, there are very uh, thick and tall uh, walls and barriers between Israelis and Iranians. And uh, Israelis should not expect any um, significant change uh, in this regard from Iran, because Iran is living under a dictatorship. It's not only about Israel. Uh, this, the, the government is applying censorship on uh, many, many other issues too. You know, they, they, they apply censorship not only on um, Jewish people, but also on, uh, you know, Baha'is and, you know, um, uh, Christians. They are under persecution, suppression, and um, it's, uh, they live in Iran, but actually uh, they are somehow disconnected from the rest of the society. Israel is a uh, developed and democratic society. And uh, I'm not talking about the government. Um, um, uh, on the contrary, I think the civil society in um, Israel, um, including universities, um, can play an important role in introducing Israel um, in its different aspects to Iranian society and help them to understand that uh, this, uh, the existing animosity between Iran and Israel is not genuine, it can disappear, and uh, both nation, both uh, country can find uh, common ground they can get uh, closer to each other, they can understand each other better, and uh, so uh, I think uh, the, the civil society and non-government uh, organizations, um, even private um, um, companies and so on, can invest, can work, can help, um, Hebrew literature, uh, Israeli, different cultural products uh, to be Persianized and accessible uh, for Iranians. Actually, in it, it's doable, and it's not that uh, only it's doable. I think it's a um, duty and a responsibility of all those who are dreaming peace in the Middle East, and we all know that there will not be um, sustainable peace and security in the Middle East without um, uh, um, some kind of normalization of uh, relationship between Iran and Israel. As long as Iran and Israel uh, see each other um, as enemy, I think it would be very difficult to imagine that a sustainable peace um, can be um, um, uh, held in, 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 in the region. So I stop here and I thank you again for your patience and for your invitation for having me here.